Richard III suffered from one of the worst reputation problems in English history. The Bank of England doesn't want to go down that same road to historic ignominy, to be seen as callous, arrogant, out of touch. Andy Haldane, the bank's free-thinking chief economist, is leading an initiative by the bank to connect with the public by establishing citizens' panels. 24 ordinary people in each of the UK's 12 regions who come together to tell the bank what's going on from their perspective. One of the first citizens' panel meetings is held in Leicester, not far from the cathedral where old Richard's bones now lie. For much of the past 300 years of the Bank of England's history, it's been resolutely, unabashedly closed to the general public. Now, transparency has increased in recent decades, but now the Bank of England, led by its chief economist, Andy Haldane, wants to start a genuine dialogue with the British people. The numbers can be quite revealing on what's going on, but they are as nothing by comparison with the conversations. I have understood more about the economy the light and the shade from those conversations than I ever would from a spreadsheet or from a model. They're not either or, they are both complementary parts to get a feel of the mood of the nation. We are still Unusually for a central banker, Andy Haldane has also been appointed chair of the government's Industrial Strategy Council. How much of a distraction do you feel this sort of interminable subject of Brexit is to achieving that industrial strategy and its ultimate objectives, which is to create a more balanced uh, UK economy. In the absence of Brexit, might more have been done? You know, perhaps. That strikes me as plausible, that one of the costs so far of Brexit is that not as much other stuff has happened as might. Nonetheless, let's be clear, you don't solve a skills problem overnight. You don't solve an infrastructure problem overnight. You don't solve an investment problem overnight. It's over the long term consistency in the strategy is absolutely key and the role of the council that I chair is to try and secure that degree of consistency over time. Andy Haldane is not your typical central banker. He seems much more at home talking about issues such as inequality or the economics of happiness than he does worrying about whether interest rates should go up or down. Now that reputation for free-range thinking has won him many admirers and also a few detractors. Nevertheless, there are some who have named him as a potential next governor of the Bank of England. It's not just me doing this or Mark doing these citizens panels, it's across all of the top policymakers uh, at the bank. It's a bank-wide initiative, that's a terrific that it is. And it increases the chances of this being a durable initiative. The real value comes from continuity and longevity, building those relationships with companies, with people, with charities, with communities. And that is what we intend to do. And that ought to happen irrespective of who uh, the next governor ends up being. And is it a job that you're going to put your hat in the ring for? Ha. Well, listen, I've got, got a job currently. It's a job I love. Uh, it's a job that it's a privilege uh, to carry out. And I'm very happy focusing on just that job right now. If Jeremy Corbyn's party came to power, the new government's industrial strategy would look very different. Labour are promising an industrial kind of revolution, if you like, in nationalising a lot of utilities, a lot of these big privatised sectors. Would it be a good thing, bad thing, indifferent? Well, our role on the council actually is not to opine on the policies, whether it's of the government or the op opposition of the day, it's to evaluate what impact those policies have once they are being implemented and say, are they doing anything to lift the spirits of the economy? Are they boosting the productive potential of companies? Are they boosting the pay of workers? Are they enhancing the well-being of citizens? This is about forming a view on what works and as importantly, what doesn't work. There's no shame, by the way, in policies uh, not working, provided you are candid about reaching that judgment. At the Leicester Citizens Panel, the participants 
raise a wide range of issues. How does the Bank of England feeling, feel about maybe having more democratic control over what you do? I wondered if it could be something that you look at when you have a citizens panel for young people. So was it a real dialogue? I really got the impression that the bank was trying to earnestly engage with people outside of London. I'm just wondering to what extent is this about public perception? This is for real. Um, if this was PR, we'd do this in a very different way. So, is that a promise the citizens of Leicester and the wider UK can take to the bank?